So you probably, in other words, don't need to say, well, I know exactly what your credit will be by calculating if your income was 85,000 in a discussion. You're gonna rely on the software to some degree to help you out with that calculation so that you have the general ideas and then you can deconstruct so that you can project into the future, discuss what, what is going on uh, logically from the broad strokes. And then when doing tax preparation, of course, you will have the form and you can enter that into the system and deconstruct to make sure everything's properly calculated. All right, you can't claim an American Opportunity Credit if your MAGI, Modified Adjusted Gross Income, is 90,000 or more, 180,000 or more if file a joint return. Modified Adjusted Gross Income, the MAGI. For most taxpayers, the MAGI is Adjusted Gross Income, just the AGI, your AGI, Adjusted Gross Income, as figured on your federal income tax return. So MAGI, when using Form 1040 or 1040SR, if you file Form 1040 or 1040 SR, your MAGI is the AGI on line 11 of that form modified by adding back any. So these are the modification por portion of the MAGI, modified AGI. One, foreign earned income exclusion. So that's going to be the big one, but it would only be there if you had that foreign earned income exclusion. Two, foreign housing exclusion. Three, foreign housing deduction. Four, exclusion of income by bona fide residents of America, Samoa, and five, exclusion of income by bona fide residents of Puerto Rico. All right, here's the worksheet for the, for the MAGI. If you have these components that are in place, I won't go into it in detail here, this is another area where it doesn't hit everyone with these MAGI because oftentimes if these aren't in effect, it'll just be your AGI. And of course, software can help you out in those scenarios as well. Uh, and you can kind of deconstruct using software. So phase out. If your MAGI is within the range of incomes where the credit must be reduced, you will figure your reduced credit using lines two through seven of form 8863 part one. The same method is shown in the following example. Example, uh, you are filing a joint return and your MAGI is 165,000 in 2022. You paid 5,000 of qualified education expenses. You figure a tentative American opportunity credit of 2,500 because you paid more than the 4,000 and therefore you maxed out at 2,500 if you didn't have an AGI phase out for your income level, which we're assuming we will he have here. So 100% of the first 2,000 qualified expenses plus 25% of the next 2,000. Okay, because your MAGI is within the range of incomes where the credit must be reduced, you must multiply your tentative credit, $2,500, by a fraction, the number, the numerator, top part, of the fraction is 180,000, the upper limit for those filing a joint return minus your MAGI. So the denominator bottom part is 20,000, the range of income for the phase out uh, 160,000 to 180,000. The result is the amount of your phased out reduced American opportunity credit, uh, 1,000 uh, 875 in this case. So you're probably not going to do that like in your head, you know, and be able to, because you're going to just uh, look at the range of when the phase out starts and ends. And then, and then the software will probably help you out with this calculation in most cases, although it's not that complex to calculate, but I'm just saying 2,500, 180,000 minus 165 over the 20,000 gives us that 1875. All right, refundable part of credit. 40% of the American Opportunity Credit is refundable for most taxpayers, meaning the refundable portion of the credit is the amount that could take the tax liability below zero. If you don't owe any tax, you still get like a quote refund, end quote, or a benefit program. That's when the tax code is used as more of a welfare program, benefit program, as opposed to tax system. However, if you were under age 24 at the end of 2022 and the conditions listed below uh, and the conditions listed below apply to you, you can't claim any part of the American Opportunity Credit as a refundable credit on your tax return. Instead, your allowed credit figured on Form 8863 Part 2 will be used to reduce your tax as a non-refundable credit only. Okay, so you don't qualify for a refund uh, if item one, A, B, or C, two, and three below apply to you. One, you were 
A, under age 18 at the end of 2022, or B, age 18 at the end of 2022, and your earned income defined below was less than half of your support defined below, or C, over 18 and under 24 at the end of 2022, and a full-time student defined below, and your earned income defined below was less than one half of your support defined below, meaning in essence, you're kind of, a, you could be subject to being a dependent. Uh, in those cases, uh, it, you, it's possible to be a dependent. You might qualify for a dependent status in those cases. Okay, two, at least one of your parents was alive at the end of 2022. Three, uh, you are filing a return as single head of household qualified surviving spouse or married filing separately for 2022. Earned income. Earned income includes wages, salaries, professional fees, and other payments received for personal services actually performed. Earned income includes the part of any scholarship or fellowship grant that represents payments for teaching, research, or other services performed by the student that are required as a condition for receiving the scholarship uh, or fellowship grant. Earned income doesn't include that part of the compensation for personal services rendered to a corporation, which represents a distribution of earnings or profits rather than a reasonable allowance as compensation for the personal services actually rendered. If you are a sole proprietor or a partner in a trade or business in which both personal services and capital are material income producing factors, Earned income also includes a reasonable allowance for compensation for personal services, but not more than 30% of your share of net profits from that trade or business after subtracting the deduction for one half of self-employment tax. However, if capital isn't an income producing factor and your personal services produced, the business income, the 30% limit doesn't apply. All right, support. Your support includes food, shelter, clothing, medical and dental care, education, and the like. Generally, the amount of the items of support will be the amount of expenses incurred by one furnishing such item. So if the item of support is in the form of property or lodging, measure the amount of such item of support by its fair market value. However, a scholarship received by you isn't considered support if you are a full-time student, you can see publication 501. So you're looking at the support to see if you would qualify for, in essence, the support test to be claimed as a, as a dependent to, uh, by someone else, if you were eligible to be claimed as a dependent. Full-time student, you are a full-time student uh, for 2022 if during any part, now notice we're talking about full-time student here, not because it's a requirement to claim uh, the credit, but because full-time student may be one of the requirements to see if you would be possibly able to be claimed as a dependent uh, by someone. So that would be like if you're under, if you're, if you're still under 24, uh, but a full-time student, possibly you could still be claimed as a dependent if all the other dependency tests would be met. So you are a full-time student for 2022 if during any part of any five calendar month during the year, you were enrolled as a full-time student at an eligible educational institution defined earlier or took a full-time uh, on-farm training course uh, given by such an institution or by a state, county, or local government agency.